Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Donnie here, back again with another installment in my classic TV Spotlight series. So today I'm going to be talking about a show that I watched all the time when I was a kid. Uh, I mentioned in my intro video that my love and appreciation of old TV shows kind of came from watching Nick at Night when I was younger. And this was one of my favorite shows. It was my go-to sh one of my go-to shows. So it's a show that is from the late 70s, early 80s, and it was called Three's Company. I'm sure many of you have heard it and probably see, seen it, and I just um, but wanted to kind of examine it further, especially, you know, I've recently started kind of watching it again for the first time since, you know, my childhood. But uh, so it's interesting to kind of look at it through different eyes now. Um, so I, you know, it's a very funny show. I still enjoy it, but it's also a show that was kind of a product of its time, and I'll get into that uh, later on in my video. So, in the first, so first, um, I'm gonna talk about the premise of the show. Involves a couple of roommates. First, there's Chrissy. Uh, who's a secretary, she's played by Suzanne Summers, and Janet, who's a florist, and she's played by Joyce DeWitt. And they invite a man to stay with them. The man is uh, Jack Tripper, played by the late, great J John Ritter. Uh, now, although they are, you know, they like them, um, and they agree to just be platonic friends, they know that they're, they're landlords, uh, a couple named the Ropers uh, are not gonna really stand stand for this living situation. So they tell so they tell them that Jack is gay, even though he's he's not. He's really straight. And but you know, so he will accept the living situation after hearing that. Now. This is more so towards Mr. Roper. Mrs. Roper actually finds out their their ruse early on in the show, but she doesn't care. But you know, so it's kind of kept up for Mr. Roper in particular. Uh, so there were uh, a few cash changes. The Ropers wound up leaving to start on their own sitcom uh, spinoff series and, um, after season three, and they're replaced by the new landlord, Ralph Furley, played by the great Don Knotts, uh, and they still continue to keep up the ruse for him as well. Um, also, Suzanne Summers left the ser series after season five, and they have a couple of roommates after that versus uh, Chrissy's cousin Cindy, and then finally uh, Terry for the last few seasons. Um, and also, uh, uh, Larry, who is Jack's best friend, he starts off as a in a recurring role, but eventually gets upgraded to re the regular cast for uh, his final, um, for the last few seasons. <clears throat> so the show was very popular at the time. Uh, it was. You know, it was nominated uh, once for Best Comedy Series at the Emmys and nominated won several Golden Globes. Uh, John Ritter won a, uh, won a Golden Globe and an Emmy for his role and no, a number of nominations. Um, you know, it had very good ratings, was among, you know, the highest rated shows of, at the time. So it was very, pop, very popular. And a lot of the humor was based off of uh, misunderstanding you know, it was a farce and slapstick, and the humor is based off of a lot of misunderstandings. You know, it it was kind of a staple of the show where someone may overhear something or take something out of context and, you know, kind of go to, like, the worst-case scenario and, you know, would reach to frantic antics and all uh, and crazy stuff that happens that, you know, you can watch and be like, it's, you know, they didn't have to go that far. They didn't have to do that. But, you know, it's, you know, some aspects unrealistic, but, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. But it was really um, funny at the time, you know, really funny. And that's, you know, part of what I really enjoyed 
uh, about it. It was also um, a lot of there were a lot of sex jokes in in particular. Uh, a running joke is kind of the Roper's um, sex life and how uh, Mrs. Roper is very dissatisfied with her husband and isn't you know getting any you know to put it politely uh and i remember as a kid i was only nine ten years old laughing at these jokes and that and my you know which probably shouldn't have shouldn't have at the time but you know i probably didn't understand them entirely but there was a laugh track so i laughed at it um so there was like a lot of sexual humor and uh a lot of it was but a lot of it was based off of jack's you know perceived orientation he was gay and that's part of the reason why this show is a product of its time that you know he um you know there are some jokes that are kind of could be kind of construed as homophobic and you know or, really don't stand the test of time and can be kind of cringy, you know, but it was kind of progressive, you know, I know the, at the time, like, you know, members of the LGBTQ plus community, you know, really had very little representation on, on television and, you know, this really wasn't in uh, representation because he wasn't actually, his character wasn't actually gay. It was, he had a straight actor playing a straight character pretending to be gay. So that's, you know, not exactly progress. And certainly, like, a lot of progress has been made since then, but there's still more to be made. Um, but I won't get, you know, get up on a soapbox in this video. But, um, but at the time, you know, was pretty progressive because, you know, there was, you know, mostly everyone was totally okay with this outside of Mr. Roper and Ralph Furley and, you know, and even for, and even, um, you know, for Jack you know, himself, you know, he had to pretend to be gay at the time and, you know, which could you know, kind of like make a lot of straight men un uncomfortable, but at the time he, you know, had no problem with people perceiving him th this way. So, you know, it's a little, so I guess it's a little good in those, those regards, but, you know, particularly comments from, you know, Mr. Roper and Ralph Furley, you know, jokes that are kind of, um, kind of cringy and, you know, can make you roll your eyes, but they are kind of, these characters are portrayed as buffoons, and, you know, so, you know, so it's a little bit of a seesaw there, uh, but I know probably at the time there were viewers who would laugh kind of unironically at the, you know, at their jokes, and, you know, would laugh at, at their comments and probably uh, agree with them, so, you know. Not exactly the greatest progress made. Uh, also, you know, the character Chrissy is kind of uh, perpetuates this whole dumb blonde stere stereotype, and you know, it, you know, it's something that's kind of been a go-to for comedy, which you know, maybe should uh, shouldn't have been. Um, it also there's a little bit of sexism mixed in with that. And also, you know, another reason why it's kind of a product at the time of its time was that, you know, it, it would be kind of a hard show to reboot, you know, now because, you know, in the present day, because, you know, it wouldn't be very realistic because nowadays the landlords probably wouldn't care if there was a single man living platonically with, um, with some women that, you know, most landlords would just, just think, you know, hey, as long as you pay your rent and don't become a nuisance or destroy the place, whatever, then I got no problem. <laughs> I have no problem with, with your living situation. So, you know, but at the time, you know, the kind of, you know, that was a realistic concept, I guess. Uh, but it's still, you know, despite some rather 
problematic aspects to it. It's still a very funny show. I still find myself laughing at it. And, you know, and, you know, a lot of the situations, they are over the top, but very funny. And, you know, John Ritter, who's such an incredible talent, he, he kind of steals the show. He's goofy and funny and, you know, cl clumsy. It was a staple of his character, his clumsiness. So it was really an excellent, excellent part. And, you know, He's probably my favorite character on this, and you know, so it was just an an interesting show, and I think it was you know it was worth uh, taking a closer look at the series that I enjoyed as a kid, and you know still too for this time, but maybe you know a little less so, but not much. But. So uh, let me know what you think. Did anyone? Watching this video, did you uh, watch Three's Company? What did you think? What did you think about it at the time? Maybe today, what do you think about it? And you know, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the works. And until next time, take it easy, y'all.